Now, it's been a historic effort that to some extent has changed the face of Canada. Uh, more than 26,000 Syrian refugees now in this country, 2,200 of them in B.C. And CBC has been there every step of the way, from the, the preparations for their arrival to the tearful airport reunions, to the ongoing challenges, finding things like housing, uh, accessing English courses, getting jobs in this province. And for three months, CBC journalists Bal Bratch and Catherine Rolfson have been following these stories in our Finding Refuge stories. They join us now to talk a little bit more about what has been a, a pretty long road, mm -hmm. right? Over that road, I mean, there, there have been bumps, ups and downs. Catherine, let me start with you. I mean, what surprised you about this journey? You know, Andrew, I think before going into this project, my idea of a refugee was pretty one-dimensional, to be honest. I was thinking about somebody who was a victim, who was just happy to arrive in Canada. But the more I met these refugees, I realized that they were coming from something. A lot of them had well-off uh, careers back home, and they didn't want to leave their countries. And as much as they're grateful to be here in Canada, and they are, they're still mourning their lives that they left behind or their families that they left behind. I remember one family that had to make the decision between staying and caring for their elderly parents in Aleppo and bringing their children to safety in Canada. Right. Can you imagine making that decision? And, and you know, we, we had such a, a vivid picture, a vivid portrait of, what, of the, the situations that they were coming from, but also of, of what dealing with reality here was. You know, Bal, I'm curious to get your take on I mean, in terms of what surprised you over the course of that, that span. I think for you and I, we both know that the online comments, they can be pretty hurtful sometimes. Yeah. And people can be mean. We know the trolls lurk in the comment section. And I was expecting a lot of that with these stories, but some stories where I thought, you know what, this is a really positive story. There's no way someone's going to say something negative about it. Uh, we had this story about a 12-year-old boy he uses allowance money to buy mittens for refugees and people started attacking him in the comment section and I remember having to text his mom to say don't let him read the comments because people are being mean and I just I've never had to do that before so I was surprised by things like that was it was it difficult I mean particularly this job given and I mean I think a reporter's job is always difficult to some extent but but the the, the stories that you're dealing with on a daily basis I mean that's really something and you're getting close to the people right we've yeah. been um, contacting these refugee families over time, weeks and months in. Um, so I did, it was difficult for me maintaining my objectivity and distance as a journalist when a lot of these families saw me as a lifeline. They were asking me for help personally finding housing or getting jobs. And I had to explain that that's not my role as a journalist, but hopefully in bringing their stories to light, help will emerge. Yeah, and, and, and I've heard so much firsthand from people who do tell their stories how on some level it is it is helpful for them, right? It is therapeutic mm -hmm. to be able to just unload that. And was that your and experience? And when you say too? unload, that's yeah. what happens. You're sitting with these people and it's hard not to feel something, right? Um, it's heavy material and, and it's emotions and they transfer to you. So you're sitting there, you carry their story with you. I remember this woman, Farah Ali, we did a story on her. Right. She was an Iraqi refugee, severely injured, one day just going out to have ice cream with her son and a car bomb exploded. Now she's had 11 surgeries, can't even hold her son. She wants to play with her kids. She can't do a lot of the basic things that we all take for granted. And those kind of stories just stay with you. So I think for me, it was dealing with some of that emotional stuff after the story is over, that can be difficult. Talk to me about the highlights, because as, as difficult as a, of a place that, that a lot of these folks were coming from, the road ahead, I think, is, is brighter for, for the vast majority of them. There are challenges, to be sure. Yeah. But, but I mean, what, what were some of the highlights for, you, for, for both of you in, in being able to tell these stories and to hear the stories, too? Yeah. I think uh, a moment that's going to stick with me forever, I hope, is um, meeting up with a refugee family at a park near their home. We'd been talking about a lot of the challenges, the, the job search, the money worries, uh, and then their four-year-old daughter caught sight of the playground right. and she ran to the playground. I remember the story. Yeah, very, very and, well. and I couldn't yeah. figure out why she was so excited. It was kind of a dinky old park. Right. It turns out it was her first time in her life. She was four years old being on a playground because it was too dangerous in Syria for her to go outside. So. And it, it was something to see her smile, but to see her father smile Absolutely. too. That yeah. was something that really... Yeah, and a lot of the families have told me the reason they've made this journey to Canada is for their children. I mean, they are going to face a lot of hardships, the parents, but 
for the children, it's a new life, and so this really illustrated that. Belle, you get the last word. What, what stood out I for you? I just love it when our stories inspire people to act. And I remember when we shared that first story about Salmon Arms, lone Syrian refugee. After our coverage, they said they, they were inundated with calls of other communities saying, can you come talk to us? How do we do this? We want to do this too. They're bringing in 40 Syrian refugees. Salmon Arm, a pretty white town, admittedly, they said that there wasn't much diversity before this initiative began. Now they've gone to Revelstoke, they're going to Merritt, and they're sharing it and spreading the initiative. And it's great to hear that. Yeah, well, Belle and Catherine, I will just say, both of you did outstanding work. We were, we were following the stories from the very, very beginning. I certainly got a lot of feedback from folks who watched your pieces on our show, and I hope a lot of that feedback has also made it to you as well, uh, because they were some pretty incredible stories. So thanks for sharing your side of it. It's been a pleasure. It's been great. Thanks.